Create and execute Windows command files. Search Gmail contacts file. This video shows how to modify the code described in the search text files video to search a CSV contacts list exported from the Gmail web page. You should watch the previous video before watching this one. The steps to export the contacts need to be changed for email services other than Gmail, but the code to process the CSV file will remain the same. You are watching a Tom's Tech Notes video. If you like this video, please wait until you are finished watching it, then click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page. A welcome video will play to describe my other videos. Here's how to export the contacts file from Gmail. I've already created a test contacts group that only has my own name in it to protect the privacy of my contacts. This is that group. It is called test contacts. To export the CSV file for the contacts, click the more arrow here, select export. Then select the option you want and I will be exporting just the group test contacts which again just has my name in it. Probably better if you select this format which is CSV format for importing into Outlook and other applications. Sounds a little more general and I know it works. So click export. Confirmation page. Do you want to save it? Yeah. Now it's exported it to the downloads folder on the browser. So click Tools, Downloads. Here's the latest export of the contacts file. Drag that to the desktop is the simplest way to proceed. Close the browser. Double click the icon to open the contacts file. It opens in Notepad. The first uh, record contains all the titles for the fields, so we'll go past that. It starts with the first name, middle name, last name, and if you follow down, the email address is there, and that's the 15th item in the record. So let's, let's uh, scroll up. Here is my entry down at the bottom. First name, middle name is empty, last name. If you count over to where the email address is, you'll find it's the 15th item. As we mentioned in the earlier video, adjacent delimiters, commas, are treated as a single delimiter. So without processing, this is item 1, item 2, item 3 but we need to process it to put a space between each of the commas. It only takes two commands to do that. All you need to do is click Edit, Replace, replace two commas with comma, space, comma, hit Replace All, and you'll find that the way the replacement works you still have pairs of them that are not separated, so do replace all one more time. Now all the comma delimiters in the file have a space between them and can be processed correctly by my code. So that file is now ready to use. It's contacts.csv. Go ahead and save the changes. We'll put it in the same folder with the uh, batch file that we're executing just to make things easier. Here's the folder that contains all my batch code I'm working with. I'll drag the CSV file into that folder. Be careful to drag it above that folder or it'll put it in that folder. I want it down here with the others, so drag it above that folder. Release, and there it is, contacts.csv. It's in the same folder that all the other files are in, so we won't have to specify a path when we use that in the code. Now let's look at the code from the previous video. We need to modify it to handle the way the format of this CSV file. It is the tenth video, so it's in here. We'll open it with the editor. Now here's the code we need to modify. 
Let's start out by saving it and we'll call it vid11-1. That's just in case I want to add more pieces of code for video number 11. And we'll do a save. Now we're editing video 11, which is what we want to do. The changes are pretty simple. All we have to do, first of all, we change the file to context.csv. Token count will now be 15 because we're going to read out through the email address, which is the 15th item in the record. We are going to use a common delimiter. Let's not use the test flag because we need to look at this file, not the test file. So let's just change it to no. You could actually change it to anything except yes. So this code will not execute. Let's keep going down through the code, see what else we need to change. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test that we entered the file name correctly, whether it exists. We're going to check for a conflict, but there isn't any because we are using a delimiter. So this check won't, won't get done. We'll keep going down. There's some more debug code. Uh, it's not executing because the test flag is set to no, not yes. After it gets to this point, it's going to ask for the number of the field to search. And it, it does the code that we explained in the previous video. Let's continue going down. We're going to read tokens 1 through 15 with that change we made. And the common delimiter is fine and, and the file's fine. Now, we're going to save uh, the first three fields as before, but now we're going to save the 15th field. So we have to add code to save that field. Let's just call it C for CSV or for contacts equals. Now we need the letter, and it turns out if you go through the alphabet, it's going to be W. It's going to put the 15th token into variable percent percent %w. So now we're going to test, did you, did you want to search 1? Did you want to search 2? No. Did you want to search 3? Now we need to add code if you want to search record item 15. So we'll just copy this code and update it to 15. This is making, uh, since we're not testing that the user really asked for either 1, 2, 3, or 15, it will allow him to say he's searching 4 through 14, but none of these tests will execute, so it'll never find anything, and it won't give an error. And we'll, we'll verify that when we test the code. You could put in code to rule out the range uh, 4 through 14, but let's not bother. Okay, so we've got that now. Again, we called it C. Let's go back and double check what we called the variable. We've got a C, but we don't have a C1. So let's just copy this code and change it so we don't screw it up. And it's going to be C1. And it's going to be C. That'll strip the spaces from C and put it in C1. Now we'll go down to the block we're working on 15, and this is going to be C1, and I believe we're done. Let's, let's see if there's anything else we need to change. Oh, uh, one thing, we do want to print it out or display it. So uh, if we didn't find it, we need to add it to the end of this one. And we just need to add this. But we need to have it, of course, be C. So we added the delimiter C. And we're going to add the same thing down here for when it does find a match. And again, we're going to change that to C. And we should pretty much be done. Let's look at the rest of the code, but I don't think there's anything else we need to change. So that's pretty easy. So you can add extra fields pretty fast. So let's double check what we did at the beginning of the code. Yeah, contacts.csv in the same folder with, with the batch file. Yes, there's 15 tokens. Uh, OK. And we're going to go down and we're going to look at the code for after you read it, which is here. Nothing changes here. It's all been, it's all in variables. So that, that's all OK. And then we get down, we added this code for the W variable for the 15th data item. 
C, C1. Uh, going down through the list of, of comparison operations, we added a 15, we put compared it with C1, and we're done. And then we added it to the output, and that was it. So we added after Z, we added a delimiter and the C, and then on the same one here, after Z, we added a delimiter and the C. So those are the changes. So we need to save it to make sure we updated the actual batch file. And now I'll execute the batch file by opening the folder and double clicking the icon. I've suppressed all the output and since we're not running test mode that's not going to produce any output. Okay let's say we're going to search field 1 for Tom. We found it and there's the record and it does show the email address and we'll search uh, column 3 for Wallace. Remember capitalization matters and it found that. Now let's search for the email address and it found my email address in column 15. Remember, capitalization is very important. It must match what you're searching for and the field in the record. In future videos, we'll see how to modify this code to turn it into a function and then develop some other routines that will become a file management package where you can search for and retrieve information and perhaps modify records in a text file. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, please click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page to watch my other videos.